Welcome back to podcast episode two of the Dow Woods 2 podcast. Guys, today I have a great topic uh, to all those high school students and college students. I'm going to be talking about college credit, transferring your credit, dual enrollment, CLEP tests, all the stuff you need to know about how to acquire credit cheaper before college, in college, and during college, and how you can get ahead and not have to pay full price for every single credit that you take while in college. All right, so I got some great points here with my laptop I wanted to share with you guys. The first one is, um, well, first off, what is a college credit? What is this thing that we're trying to get? And um, if you have no idea what it is at its base, a college credit is a unit that measures learning at a United States college. Um, one college credit hour assumes one hour of in-classroom and two hours of outside of classroom homework or studying or whatever. Um, in your average college semester, um, there will be a three credit course. So it assumes three credits a week of in-class time and therefore the math would be six credits or six hours of um, homework or studying time. Um, all these numbers are approximate, like some classes it might take three or four hours of studying for every one hour in class, or it might only take 30 minutes to an hour of homework outside of class. But that is the metric that is used to count a college credit. Um, when it obviously when attending your colleges or universities, how many credits you get depends on what major you're looking for. Um, a general rule is a undergraduate degree, a bachelor's, um, is about 128, anywhere from 120, 130, depending on the major uh, credits um, to get that degree. Um, so, yeah, so an associate's degree, usually around 60 credit hours, a bachelor's degree around 120 credit hours. All right, so that's your, your background on college credit. This is fun stuff. This is what we're striving for, what we're trying to get. Like in each semester, um, the minimum as a full-time undergraduate college student is 12 credit hours a semester. Um, the max, depending on your university, is usually 17 or 18 before you go into what's called overtime, or you have to basically, um, you've, you're taking so many credits, depending on your major, that you actually pay extra on your tuition because you're taking so many. Um, so let's just say the average is probably 12 to 15 credits is what you'll be taking um, for the communication, business, sometimes even engineering, uh, nurses, you might be taking more, but it all depends. Um, that's a good rule. Let's go with 12 to 15 a semester. That's the math we'll go with. Um, but yeah, next, what is you know in order to get a degree you need these college credits how can you get these like before college what can you do to try to get rid of some of those gen eds some of those non-major specific classes and just uh, be able to save some money before you head off to college and while you're at college um, and there's a few ways you've got CLEP tests AP classes and dual enrollment so what are all these uh, CLEP tests um, our tests on specific topics, whether humanities, literature, college algebra, the list goes on, biology, chemistry, depending on what your university allows, but you take these CLEP tests and the, um, let's see what CLEP stand is for. So a CLEP test stands for College Level Examination Program. So these college level examination program tests is you take this period of time where you study for it and then if you pass the test, usually it's a 50 points, it's not like 50% anything like that, it's 50 points and you have completed the CLEP and you now are accounted for this uh, grade. Now, it depends on what school you go to on whether or not that 50 points can c account for a class. So say you take humanities, and the normal CLEP pass rate is 50 points, but you go to some school where it might be 58 points or 62. You would have to get 58 or 62 to pass for that school, not in general. So it just depends on what school you go to. There's a lot of variability depending on the university. 
Um, all right, so CLEP test, that's a good way. If you're a good test taker, you can knock out a bunch. The CLEPs don't cost a lot of money, and you can just take them an unlimited amount of time as you have taken all of your CLEP tests before your junior year in college. That's the cutoff. Like after that, you cannot accept any more outside of college credits. Um, next, we have AP classes um, or advanced placement classes. These are the classes you take in your high school if you're in public school or private school, um, where they're just advanced. Um, and for some colleges, if you contact them, you want to be talking to these colleges before you even start school or start transferring. It's like, hey, if I take this AP class, will it count? And we'll get onto counting credits later because there's some variability, which I really want to talk about because it's very important. But yeah, you have a CLEP tests and AP classes. These are two ways to get college credit before you are even stepping foot in the door at your college or university. The next is dual enrollment. This has become very big recently. Um, it's where you take this class, usually online, but it can be in person at your local community college or university of some sort. And basically what it is, it's dual enrollment. It's high school and college both at the same time. So it probably has the difficulty of an AP class, the difficulty of a college class, but it counts for your um, high school requirements and for college. So um, whenever you're taking dual enrollment. So the, here, let me go with the classes I've taken. So through dual enrollment, I've taken a few classes, um, specifically humanities. I wanted to just knock that gen ed out of the way. I've taken humanities, I've taken biology with a lab. So I got the full 3.5 or four credits of bio and a lab to knock that out as well. Um, I plan to collect the college algebra course, and um, I've taken a few others. I've taken both of my histories through dual enrollment. I've taken politics and American culture, so just a basic politics, culture, gen ed. And um, I've taken a Bible course through dual enrollment. It's a big thing with dual enrollment is, one, it's good learning. Like, you can learn a lot because it's basically a college class, but online, but for a lot less. Like, a normal college class costs um, 2500 to $3,000, give or take, per semester. So it just depends, obviously. Um, but these dual enrollment classes range anywhere from um, $400 to up like 1000 But like even at the most, 1000 that's less than half of what it is at college. So it's just a great money and time saver because you can just take it at home, take it while in, college, while in high school, so you don't even have to take these boring, or not even boring, but just non-major specific classes. Because like my goal, when I'm thinking about college, it's like if I'm paying for these classes, I want them to be specific to what I want to learn, to marketing. Because I plan on majoring in business marketing, minoring in music technology. So I want my classes to be about business, about writing, about speech, about music, just anything that will help those skills and so since I don't have an interest in any major math or science, I would like to get those out of the way for as cheap as possible, learn it, and do well in it, but not have to pay full price as my other classes. So there we go. We have CLEP tests, AP classes, dual enrollment. Um, there's multiple uh, outlets for dual enrollment classes. Like I said, you can go to your local university, community college, and take in-person classes, which um, would be a great way to get started on um, just figuring out the college environment. But there's also online resources um, through my university, Cedarville. They have some online stuff, but it's not a wide catalog of classes. So one, a few great resources is Grand Canyon University and Liberty Online Academy or Liberty University. They are probably two of the biggest online um, schools in the world. Liberty actually has almost 110 something thousand students. Um, so they are the largest university in the world because they have such a online presence, um, online enrollment. And so they have the resources. I would highly recommend if you're looking into it, um, Liberty University, their dual enrollment classes are very good. Half of my dual enrollment has been taken through Liberty and they were all great because they have multiple options. You can take a full 16 week semester class or you can take these intensive, which are only eight weeks. So it's not a big commitment. It's only about two months, just eight weeks. You get your three credits, 
and you're done. You're straight through, and it's just a great way to accumulate credits before you head off to college. Um, next, you have to make sure that these credits count. Gathering college credit in high school is great, but if you gather all this credit and then you go to the transfer of the school you're going to and you find out like some of these don't count, like this school does not deem this credit worthy of whatever metric they have and then it just doesn't count, that means you wasted your time and your money and your effort all on this, this class. So a big thing, there's two phrases that you need to specify and know the difference of when um, trying to get these college credits, these dual enrollment credits to count whenever you're going to a college. Um, there are two phrases and one is counted credits and the other is credits that count towards your major or your degree. Now what do, you, what do I mean by counted credits and credits that count towards your degree? Um, so credits accepted by a college can account for two things. They can um, simply count as credits to your name. So what do I mean by that? That means, um, let's say you have, let's go with 18 credits. So you've taken six dual enrollment or you've acquired six college uh, classes, each worth three credits, so 18 credits. Um, so they count these. The school says, all right, we count all of these. That's great. You have 18 credits to your name. You can probably get class uh, picks um, earlier than other kids in your uh, later years. Because obviously, like a lot of schools, you get your set um, schedule in your freshman fall. But after that, you'll be ahead. All right? Um, so they counted these. They're to your name. You could, um, quote, unquote, graduate faster. But can you? That's the big thing. Whenever you go to credits that count towards your degree, this is the important phrase. The importance with this is a college can take these credits and count them just to say how many credits you've accumulated, but that does not mean that it counts towards your major. So say you have a specific class. Um, I ran into this. So with college algebra, um, you have they have the specific class at Cedarville University, College Algebra. Not every school that I was looking at to take online would have counted for that College Algebra class. So say I got College Algebra from whatever university and tried to transfer it over, and they're like, yes, we'll count it. And then later in my time at Cedarville, they would have said, okay, you still need to take College Algebra to count for your major. So there's a difference between these credits being counted and them actually applying to your major. So it's a big thing. And if you aren't following, I will try to summarize it with this. Um, credits when accepted by a college can count for one of two things. They can count simply as credits to your name, allowing better class and dorm selection. These credits don't actually count towards your specific major. So you could say have 24 credits going into college, but only some of those would actually count towards the completion of your major. All right, so that is what like they just simply count it. It's to your name, but it's not to your major. You need classes that will specifically account for, say you're going to this university and they have this class. It is, um, let's go with a marketing degree and you have intro to marketing and say you got a credit that was intro to marketing from some other school. What this school could do is say, hey, we count that, but later on that does not apply to your major and you have to take intro to marketing again because we want you to learn what we teach, not what they taught you. So it's very important to know that distinction is that whenever you're coming in with these credits and you haven't talked with the transfers office beforehand, um, they could count them, but they won't count towards your degree. Therefore, you would have to retake classes. That's where the issue, that's a lot of the issues that people run into is this difference between counted credits and credits that count towards your degree. So the, that's the big problem. Now, how do we fix this problem? And um, it really starts whenever you are searching for colleges that you want to go to. So I lucked out 
um, through just a lot of research and I planned on playing college and soccer. So I got on the train of like looking at colleges like early, like in my sophomore year, almost of high school. Um, I really had the, the places I want to go to narrowed down. I was looking at Liberty and Cedarville University. Those were my two. So it was, it was really easy because then I was able to only have to talk to two different transfers, transfer offices, the one at Liberty and the one at Cedarville. So um, verifying whether or not a credit counted towards my degree at Cedarville, which is where I ended up going, was really simple. But you have to make sure you word it correctly and do your due diligence. So I'm going to explain how you go through that. Um, so just... So just as you're searching colleges, there's a few points that you want to be aware of and in the back of your mind whenever you're looking. And the first is when looking at colleges and determining what your major is, you want to research and screenshot the rules and guidelines of the schools that you are interested in. You want to keep these handy when searching so you can look back at them and then bring them up whenever you are talking with the people at those schools. Uh, the second is look over the transfer histories from past students of the schools you are interested in. Now, what does that mean? You want to be looking. There's a lot of websites out there similar to rate my professor, rate my dorm. I'm sure there's rate my experience or something like that out there where college students will explain how their credits were handled by the school, how these credits transferred to these schools. and just looking at that is very important and it'll be helpful to you to understand is this school very open and willing to accept any credits or are they very uh, stingy and just very oh we want you to take our classes we don't want you to take it from somewhere else we won't accept other credits unless they're super special so you just want to be aware of that before you even before you start taking dual enrollment and clap tests in high school you really want to be on top of that um, another point um, and I talked about this, but contacting the transfer offices of the, the schools or school that you are looking at is very important because getting a word confirmation, word to word confirmation of this class will count for this class that is in my degree, screenshotting it, it just verifies that, okay, I got this word confirmation from the school, they can't go back on their word. Therefore, it's going to transfer. So if they ever come up with a problem like, oh, we can't transfer it, you can bring that screenshot up and let them know like, hey, you guys told me this. And uh, But yeah, we'll get to that. But it's very big. Um, say you're on the search for college classes, or I'll just go with the example of how my family kind of did it. We were looking at um, all these dual enrollment classes that we wanted to take. And... Um, whenever we were looking at Liberty classes, because at that point, whenever I started taking Liberty online, I was pretty much set on Cedarville. So that made the process easy. But what it was is like, okay, I want to take this history and this biology, this lab, and I want to take um, this writing course all from Liberty. Now, go over to Cedarville. Hey, Cedarville, I have these four classes, this specific biology, this specific lab, this specific history one and two, and I would like to know, will it transfer exactly for this class, this class, this class, and this class that is in my business marketing degree? And through a little bit of a communication, some back and forth about what specific classes and their numbers and all of that and how I'll be doing it, they said, yes, this class over here from Liberty will transfer and will count for this class in your business marketing degree. There we go. I have my confirmation word for word from the transfer office of Cedarville of my school saying that this class will transfer when you bring it to us with your official transcript and it will count towards your major. You won't have to take it again. It will count to your name. You'll get better dorm and room selection. Obviously, they didn't say any of this, but that's what it means. I got word for word confirmation, screenshotted it. I have it. I'm good to go. So going through that process of verification um, between schools because on the academic sides of colleges there's just a lot of variability and you have to be on top of things always on top of it so whenever you're looking for those colleges and whenever you're even in college you could be a freshman or sophomore it's like oh I want to take a CLEP test or I want to take a summer class 
but um, online from a different school. Before you even pay, before you even sign up for this class, make sure you verify with the university you are looking at, um, does this class count for this class that will then count in my degree and in my major so I do not have to take it again. And getting that word for word confirmation via email or call, um, however you do it, is very important to make sure you do not have to take stuff over again. So yeah, that's the uh, kind of the rundown of what college credits are. Um, when transferring between two schools, that is a little different because you've already taken these classes um, in your school and say you're in your sophomore year and you transfer. Um, the big thing is just whenever you're looking at what school you're going to transfer to, um, look at their histories with uh, previous transfer students and how their credit exchange between your school and that school that you're transferring to is like see what students are saying see what the policies are of how um, they've worked together before liberty and cedarville transfer their stuff very well they've worked very well together as two schools so that was very helpful and big in my decision of going with liberty online because i already know they take a lot of stuff from liberty over to cedarville and cedarville usually accepts it for their degree for my degree so that's just very big. Now, um, let's go on. I want to add about um, a big thing with uh, taking dual enrollment classes is if you take dual enrollment from another school, what will usually happen is um, your school will accept those three credits but will not take the grade. So this class, it counts towards your major, but it won't no matter the grade that you get on that dual enrollment class, it will not transfer over. So this does not hurt you at all. That means you could get an A plus and it transfer over. You don't get an A plus. You just get those three credits and they're in your credits. If you get a C plus and you just pass because you need 75% to pass a college class, you still get the three credits. You don't get that C to your name. You just get those three. So a big thing if say um, you're really trying to pound out some classes over a summer and you're like, okay, I wanna take nine credits. I really wanna pound it. I really wanna get these up and spend less money so that I can have more fun or just better opportunities at um, school. What you can do is take three and just be really heavy on work, but if you pass them all, no matter the grade, you don't have to worry about the grade at all. All you have to do, pass fail pass fail in every class and obviously work your hardest but if you also have a job and you're taking these three credit nine credits like that's a lot so just remember whenever verify this with your school as well because this is how it works between liberty and cedarville um, but that's kind of the general rule is that the grade does not transfer so it's pass fail above 75 percent and you are good to go you'll get those three credits however many credits you take and they will transfer over. So I'm transferring over um, a fair amount of classes and um, the only grades that are transferring over to Cedarville are the ones that I took on Cedarville online. So the, the three classes that I took through Cedarville, I will be getting all those grades and they're already on my transcript. And I'm already um, a student, like it already, they already treat me as a student because I've been a student for two years now um, through the online academy. Um, which has been very helpful. I was able to sign up for some things earlier. Um, I've just been able to be ahead of the game because I'm already in their system, which is another point I wanted to add, is if you have the opportunity and the ability, take online classes from the school that you are going to or have interest in. So say you are interested in three colleges. Let's say you don't have it narrowed down too, too much. Um, what I would say, if you're in your junior year of high school, is every semester, um, just take an online class from each school. Or if you are homeschooled or um, able to take all three, say do a semester of nine credits, one from each class. And um, now the big thing about this is this is not pass fail, because say, you end up going to one of these three schools, the grade from that one class will apply to that school. So this is where you wanna be careful and make sure you're getting a good grade because this is when you're testing out the schools. So you might wanna space it out more when doing this test dual enrollment where you're trying to 
get these credits. They're cheaper. They're online. But you're also testing out if you want to go to that school or not. Um, so, yeah, those are really just, I hope, helpful points to guide you through this winding world of college credits and transferring and, like, applying to cl- um, colleges with the credits you have and making sure you pick the right college for that. Um, it's something that my family and I have been going through over the past two years and that we've seen other families struggle with. And I just wanted to put my two cents on from what I've learned and what we've learned through this process. And I think it is a very important step because the opportunity with online, with the internet right now to take a bunch of dual enrollment gen ed, get rid of the boring classes, get rid of the ones you don't want to take, um, for a lot cheaper and then whenever you're at college you're getting the best of what you want you're getting all of your major classes you can take some extra classes you can take i want to take some video classes on top of my music and my um, main degree which is marketing and then if i really want to then that will open me up for taking less like if i have a semester where i know i need to work or want to work or if I want to be more involved in a club or something, I can just take 12. Or if I feel like, okay, this academic semester, let's get, get to the grind, um, take 15 or 16. So it just getting these credits, which I highly recommend everybody try to get credits. Um, a recommended amount, I'm not sure. Um, what would be cool is getting a semester done. So 12 credits, that's a really good basis. Um, if you're really lucky or really good, and ahead of the game is getting upwards of 30 credits because that's all of your freshman year. Um, uh, freshman year is usually 30 credits, or I guess you could say 24 credits if we're going with that 12 credit minimum semester. So getting anywhere in that range from 12 to 24 to 30 credits, that will just really set you apart and get you ahead of the game whenever you are um, going to college. And then you'll be prepared. Like you'll be taking these college classes already. Um, if you take them from a different school, they're pass fail. So it's like even if you struggled, at least you're not struggling at your school and it's affecting your grade. You figured it out in high school, you're ready to go at college and you just know what's up. And then you just adjust to college life instead of college life, new friends, um, living in a dorm and classes. You remove that newness of the classes and because you've already been doing it for a while. So I hope that was helpful to you guys. Um, it's a very exciting time. I'm going to Cedarville University. I just cannot wait. I have a great roommate. He and I mesh well together. Hopefully we'll have him on the pod later on throughout the summer. Before I leave, I'm going to have some guests on here in this building and then hopefully up in town. Uh, we're going to set up at some coffee shops and see how that goes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please ask any questions you have um, about college or about life or just about anything in general when it comes to just our age range. I mean, I am 18, so there's just this is a really formative time for us. And I just can't wait to help you guys um, build each other up together and just see where life takes us. All right, guys. Thanks for checking in. Episode 2 of the Dalwoods 2 podcast, and I will see you guys in the next one.